is a pattern for an offset transition piece generally used to do uh, sheet metal parts to transition say you're going to go from three inches to five inches and maybe in a specified height to say six inches or whatever you want to do anyway i'm going to go through the steps it takes to make this pattern so you can transfer it onto metal and do a transition piece it's known as triangulation okay here we go nerdy guys and girls so I start out by doing what is known as an elevation view and this is a what you could also call as a side view and again you can see this is a is a transition piece it's going to go from three inches at the top to six inches at the bottom but you also know that the um, it's an offset it's not a symmetrical piece in other words here's an overhead view also known as a plan view and you can see the top of this would be three inches in diameter and at the bottom is six inches in diameter but this the main circle from the top is offset from the bottom it just makes it a little more complicated but uh, you can use this for either way but you can see that this side and this side are symmetrical so we only need to do one half of this pattern and then we can duplicate the other side by folding it over so we'll start by doing those two things right there an elevation view and a plan view <clears throat> okay I'm going to start by dividing both these half circles into six equal parts again so I take the radius there's my radius I'm going to swing an arc there then from here I'm going to swing an arc here over to here and then my final one is there okay six equal parts so I can do the same thing for this one And I can tell with my gridded paper here, there's my bottom center. <clears throat> so, again, taking half this radius, and again, you can see that there. I'm swing an arc here. Then from my middle, I'm going to swing an arc there, there, and finally over right there. Okay, six equal parts. I'm going to number these. One, two, three, four, thirteen, and fourteen. Now I'm going to connect some lines. So I've got a line now here, eight to one. Now I'm going to go one to nine. nine to two this will make sense when i'm doing as this uh, demo proceeds here so anyway i'm connecting all these lines here to the boop, boop, through here okay next up so now the idea behind triangulation triangulation so I have a um, transition piece here round at the top round at the bottom but in this case it's offset but anyway if I project straight down through this to the bottom over to here that forms a right triangle okay and there's also a length on the hypotenuse here so in other words we're looking here if I project straight down out that's gonna create a right triangle same thing here to this point right triangles and so forth all the way around this thing so here's what here's how I'm gonna start um, laying out this pattern okay starting out here by drawn drawing this particular transition piece pattern it's going to be six inches tall so I draw a line six inches down here now at a right triangle to this 
I'm going to project a line out here. Okay, so now remember we're looking straight down and out. So the bottom of that right triangle here would be this length from point 0.8 to point 0.1. I take my little thing here and I'm going to go right to there. So now I'm going to write out here 0.81. Now I'm going to go 9 to 1 or 1 to 9. So I take that point and I'm going to go point 1 to 9, 1 9. So again, straight down out, I'm I'm measuring the length of the bottom of that triangle. In other words, over here to here, this length is what I'm recording here. So now I'm going to do 9 2. You will see that these this little um, area down here is going to start getting crowded as I get all these points put on here. But we want to do this as accurately as possible. It will make our pattern that much better. So that's from 210, point 210. 2 to 10. And from 10 to 3. And so forth. You can see that some of these get really close together. Some are almost laying on top of one another, depending on the lengths, the bottom of these triangles. 6 to 14. And last, 7 to 14. Okay. So once this is done, now I'm ready to start laying out my pattern. 7 to 14. Okay. Okay, quick review. I've drawn a side view of my transition piece. The top view, from the top view, I've, I've divided the circles into six equal parts, numbered them all, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then, again, projecting down to the bottom, out to the edge, I find those lengths on each one. I've drawn the height of my um, piece. I've drawn a line 90 degrees to that and each one of those lengths, each one of these points corresponds to the bottom length of that right triangle. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm ready to start my pattern. Now these lengths are known as true lengths. Got a pencil that works here. Label these true lengths. And again, repeating myself, each one of these numbers corresponds to the length of these triangles, these right triangles. That's why we call this triangulation. All these points, all these measurements here correspond to that. So this allows me to start a pattern now. Okay, I want you to notice something. I'm using my larger compass, this point here is this line here and I want you to see that over here from the top of my triangle out to my point 81 is the same length as this. So again I'm just trying to help everyone figure out what I'm doing here. Okay so okay I'm gonna start out just a simple point somewhere here and I'm gonna call that the point from here down to 81. I'm gonna find that length be the first line of my uh, pattern here. So, again, taking the length from here to my first point, 8-1. Need to adjust that just a teeny bit. And I will project that from there down to there. I'm going to give those each point. There's my point 1. There's my point 8. Okay, now um, so I've gone to, I've gone this length. Now I'm going to take this length of this arc, okay? And I'm going to 
swing a little arc here. Now, now I'm going to find that length 1 to 9. And I'm going to find that by going right to there. Again, I can see my 0.19. Now I'm going to swing an arc here. There's my 0.9. Now I'm taking my compass again. And I'm taking this little length from 1 to 2. Just like that. And I'm swinging an arc line there. And now I'm going to find my 0.92, my length there. And again, using my nice little wheel point, there's 92 right there, as you can see. Now swinging this point out, there's my 0.2. Now I'm going to go from 2 to 10. So I go here from 0.9 to 10, swing an arc. Now I'm going to go from here, find my 0.2 to 10. Where is 10.2? 10.2 is way up into there. Right there, so I go from 2. Swing it to point 10. Again, you can see that. So here's my point 10. Now I'm going to go 10, 3. So I go back to here. I go from my point 2 to 3. That length there. Again, swinging an arc. Now I find my point 10, 3 into there. 10, 3 is right to there. I go from 10 here. Find my point 3. Now I'm going to go 3 to 11. So again, I need to get my length here. 10 to 11 right there. Swing an arc. Find my measurement 3 to 11. Let's see, where is 3 to 11? Way out here. Okay. Again, 3 to 11. Find that there. 5 to 13. Find that. That's my longest point, actually. That's my longest line. It's kind of easy to find. Five to thirteen. And this will make half the pattern for this whole thing. And I need to find my point uh, six to four, six fourteen. My second longest point, 14, I'm down to my last length. An arc. And my last point, 714, is way up in there. There is my last point. Okay, so now we can take connect it to here. That's the outside of my pattern. You can either connect all these lines with square lines, you know, and so forth, or if you have a decent eyeball with a decent freehand, you can start connecting these things like this. Actually, when I cut this pattern out, it's actually easier to do it with a pair of scissors. If you're going to lay this out on a piece of metal, especially sheet metal, because this is a technique that many um, HVAC guys, people have used for making patterns and sheet metal transitions, you know, heat ducting, ventilation ducting, air conditioning ducting, whatnot like that, uh, or food processing plants. 
uh, you can take this pattern, lay it on a piece of sheet metal, uh, take a, a hammer and a point, boom, 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 so forth, lay out your metal like that. And because this piece is going to be, remember this is only half a pattern, I'm going to add a little tab to connect these things. Have to be an exact size, but I'm going to add this together. Now, for the heck of it, I'm going to cut this pattern out. Stack. There's a half a pattern. Remember, that's only half. What I'm going to do is fold this over from this point to that point now. And there's my other half of my pattern there. I can either trace it. Let's trace this. I'm going to leave a little tab on it, make that mark, make that mark, See what we've got. So there. Let's get down. And so I've taped again. I've rolled this pattern over on itself to double it. I've taped it together. Now you can see a transition piece. Again, three inches at the top, six inches at the bottom, one inch offset on this side, two inches offset on that side, and there's your pattern. Now again, you know, let's say you're in the food processing industry, you need a hopper that's two feet diameter to the top, going to six feet, you know, some of the truck's gonna pull up and dump, you know, a load of broccoli in it or something. A lot of these things, you can't go out and buy these pieces. A sheet metal worker nowadays can buy a little, uh, you know, has a good selection of transition pieces. If you wanna make something big, especially for a food processing plant or something, this is a technique to know. You get yourself a big old piece of paper, maybe a, a box from a from a refrigerator that you know a car shipping container folded out flat you can use this technique for any type of transition piece again triangulation thanks for watching